Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 Deviations. So in today's video, we are going to be talking finally about the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1. So for the past four or five videos, integral calculus seems like a bit of a doozy, right? We've needed to deal with all of these Riemann sums, we need to deal with these limits. It kind of reminds me of what we need to do in <clears throat> uh, Lecture 5, where we were using that difference quotient to evaluate the derivative. I remember just how annoying that was, how tedious that was. Well, the fundamental theorem of calculus is kind of our first step out of that hole that's going to make integral calculus a whole lot nicer. Now, we have two parts to the fundamental theorem of calculus. It's such a cool theorem that it gets two parts. And this theorem is by name fundamental to calculus. It shows a connection between the integral and derivative, which we'll talk about even more in the next video. <clears throat> but um, this is really what ties calculus together, in my opinion. So it's a really important, really important theorem that we will be talking about. So what the fundamental theorem of calculus part one says is it asks the question if we can have an integral defined by a function. So what does that look like? This says if I have g of x is equal to the function from a to x of a function f of t dt. So it's saying if x is a variable and that is my upper limit, then I'm going to get a function g of x. So it's kind of like it's kind of defining the area under a curve as a function. So how the area changes as a function, right? So it says if x is a variable, so it changes changes um the integral result from a number to a function. So we're going to get that kind of interesting shift here. <clears throat> right, so now let's talk about the theorem. So given that f is a continuous function of a of the interval a and b, then g is continuous and differentiable on that interval between a and b, such that g of x is defined as the integral between a and x of f of t dt. <clears throat> so g of x is defined as a function. If we know f is continuous, then we know that g is going to be continuous and differentiable on the interval between a and b. So what this actually entails, and we're going to talk about this even more in the next video, is that um, f of x here is going to be equal to g prime of x. So if I, if I differentiate this g of x here, I'm going to get this function. Well, when I plug in x, I'll get that function. So that's really important. That kind of brings us to the punchline, which really should be saved to the la to the next video, but I'm so excited I'm just going to say it now, that derivatives and integrals are actually opposite operations. So if I have a function, and we'll talk about this later, so if I have a function, then I have a function f prime of x, differentiating is going to get me here, so that's differentiating then integration is going to get me here, and that's the notion of that antiderivative that we talked about at the end of Unit 3. That's going to come up, make a big comeback, and we're going to be talking about that for a while, but we don't need to worry about that just yet. <clears throat> so let's just talk about some examples with the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1. Again, that anti-differentiation stuff is going to get more important later on as we go on to the Fundamental Theorem, theorem of Calculus Part 2. So. We are going to find g prime of x if g of x is equal to the integral between 0 and x of the square root of 1 plus t squared dt. So really what we need to do, because this is an easy scenario, so all we need to do is plug in our function of t and then change it into a function of x, which just means replacing the t with the x. And then if I'm differentiating, well that's going to cancel the integral out, right? <coughs> And then I will be left with my g prime of x. So if g prime of x is equal to the square root of 1 plus x squared, and that's a pretty easy example. The fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 is pretty simple to understand. I would argue that um, it, it, it really helps with the intuition behind an integral and a derivative. So we'll do a problem here out of James Stewart's calculus textbook, uh, simple example, it's from section 5.3, number 4, and we are going to determine the derivative with respect to x of the integral from 1 to x to the fourth 
of secant of t dt. All right, so to make our life a little bit easier, we are going to institute a u substitution. So a u substitution is when we, we did a little bit of this with the chain rule, probably did a little bit in pre-calculus to uh, make things easier to understand. But it's basically when we introduce a new variable, set it equal to a function of x or t or whatever you want, and then it makes it a little bit cleaner and gives, um, gives us a more uh, easy time evaluating. So we'll say that the derivative from 1 to x to the fourth of secant t dt is equal to the derivative with respect to x of the integral from 1 to u of secant t dt. So we will set u equal to x to the fourth. So that will uh, then we'll be able to integrate with or differentiate with respect to u. So we will be left with the uh, d du times the integral from one to u of secant t dt, and then we use the chain rule here. So then we're going to be left with the du dx derivative, and that's going to be easy to find. We'll do that later though, and that's going to be um, equal to secant of u uh, du dx, and we know that we set. Um, u here equal to x to the fourth. So then, of course, the, our derivative du dx is going to be equal to 4x cubed. Now we'll just plug that in right there for our thing there. All right, so that's really how the fundamental theorem of calculus part one works. It's pretty easy to grasp. Um, it shouldn't be too tricky to understand. So in the next video, we are going to be moving on to the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 2. That was probably a hard guess. And I would argue if you were to ask me what my favorite Fundamental Theorem of Calculus is, I would say Part 2. Because this makes the evaluation of definite integrals so much easier. Uh, it, it, it changes what we did with the Riemann sums that took a couple minutes into something that takes a couple seconds. It's really cool. And just a side note, uh, review anti-differentiation, your basic antiderivatives. Uh, we'll be expecting you to know those for the next video, but not all of them. Uh, we will be devoting units to talking about more complex antiderivatives, but we'll leave that to the future. So thank you for watching, and we will see you guys in the next one to talk about the FTC part two. Thank you.